everyone. My name is Emily. I'm an instructor here at the Fort Wayne Children's Zoo. And today I wanted to talk to you about animal superpowers. That's right. Did you know animals had superpowers? They do. But here at the zoo, we call them adaptations. Now, just like superpowers, adaptations help animals to survive. So that means that anything on an animal's body or anything that animal's going to do in order to survive is an adaptation. Now, I want to show you some astonishing superpowers or adaptations on some of our amazing zoo animals here today. But before we do that, I want you to understand two things. I want you to know that we're going to be looking for two types of adaptations. The first type is a physical adaptation. Now, physical adaptations are the adaptations that are found on an animal's body. So those things on your body that help you to survive are physical adaptations. Let's practice real fast. I want you to think about your body or maybe a pet at home. Think about their body. Can you find something on your body or their body that helps you to survive? For me, I think about my dog, Josie. She's got this beautiful, luscious fur coat all over her body. That fur coat is gonna keep her nice and warm in the winter. That's gonna help her to survive. So that's a good example of a physical adaptation. Now the second type of adaptation we're gonna be looking for today is a behavioral adaptation. You may have heard that word before. You may have heard somebody say, be on your best behavior. That means that they want you to choose good actions to take, right? That's because behaviors are the actions that we take. So behavioral adaptations are gonna be the behaviors or the actions animals take in order to survive. Can you think of any actions you might take in order to survive? My dog, Josie, she likes to bark. That's the action she chooses to take a lot. That's her behavioral adaptation in order to warn us that there could be danger coming towards the house. Now that we know the two types of adaptations we're looking for, let's get out of some of our animal friends and see if we can find their superpowers. All right, so this first animal friend I have today is one of my favorites. Hello, this is Sherman. He is a three-banded armadillo. You can see those three bands. Now, we are trying to find his physical and behavioral adaptations, right? So let's start with physical. Do you see anything on Sherman's body that's gonna help him to survive? For me, the most obvious one is this hard armored shell, right? He's got this hard armor all the way down his body. Now what's really interesting is that hard armor is actually made out of the same material as your fingernails. So your fingernails are made out of something called keratin. That's exactly what his armor is made out of, and that's a good physical adaptation to have because not many things can get their teeth through this, so that's gonna help Sherman to stay nice and safe. Now, another physical adaptation you might be able to see, ooh, look at those big, huge, long toenails. Those big, long toenails are gonna help Sherman find his food. Now, Sherman doesn't like to eat ice cream or pizza or cotton candy like we do. Sherman likes to eat bugs. Mm, who wants a bug sandwich for lunch? Not me. <laughs> so Sherman will actually use those big, huge, long toenails to dig in the dirt to find his bugs. That's another great adaptation to have. And lastly, Sherman, you can't see it right now, but inside his mouth, he's got a big, long, sticky tongue, almost like an anteater, to help him get those bugs. So those are a few of his physical adaptations. Now let's talk about his behavioral adaptations. Do you see Sherman doing anything right now that might help him to survive? I can see one thing, he's curled up in this ball. So this ball is gonna help him protect his nice squishy belly. So his squishy belly is kind of vulnerable to predators. So what he does is he curls up. Now what's really cool is his head <laughs> and his tail actually fit perfectly together like puzzle pieces when he's completely curled up into a ball. The three-banded armadillo is the only one that can do that. So that action he's taking to curl up is actually a behavioral adaptation. He's choosing to do that, right? Now, one of the coolest things Sherman can do is he can choose to swim. I know you, you're probably thinking, he's too heavy to swim. He's got this big, hard, hard armored shell, but actually he can inflate that squishy belly that we talked about earlier, and he can float on the water and swim really, really well, which is good because if a predator is coming after him and he's sniffing out his trail, Sherman can swim across the water and that trail will kind of be washed away so the predator can't find him. So those are some pretty awesome superpowers Sherman our armadillo has. Now before we go, I wanna show you one more animal friend. So my next animal friend is actually a red kneed tarantula. You're gonna find these guys down in Mexico in semi-deserts and forest. Her name is Charlotte. 
Now, what is the first thing you notice about Charlotte? Remember, we're trying to find her physical and behavioral adaptations. One of the first things I see is that bright red coloration going down her leg. Why do you think that's there? Why would she want to stand out? That bright red coloration is actually really important. It's gonna be a warning to predators to stay away because Charlotte's actually venomous. Now what the predators don't know is that the venom Charlotte has is actually for her prey. It's not really strong enough to hurt a predator, but they don't know that and hopefully that red coloration will scare her or scare away the predator. Now, do you think that red coloration on Charlotte's body is a physical or behavioral adaptation? If you said physical, then you'd be correct. She doesn't get to choose it. It's not an action. That red coloration on Charlotte is actually just there. So it is a physical adaptation that's gonna help her to survive. Now, something else I notice about Charlotte is that she's got this hair all over her. She's one hairy lady. She's got hair all over her. That hair is actually gonna be kind of a secret weapon. So remember, we said that her venom is not very potent. It's not really gonna hurt the predator too much. So she has the secret weapon. If a predator is bothering her, she can actually flick hairs off her abdomen, that big part along her back. She can flick hairs off there and they'll get in their eyes, their nose, their mouth of the predator, and it'll distract the predator just enough time for Charlotte to crawl away. So that those hairs are actually going to help protect her by her some time. It's a pretty cool secret, rep, secret weapon, right? Now, the action of her flicking these hairs off her body, do you think that's behavioral or physical? If you said behavioral, you are correct. It is an action she's choosing to do to flick those hairs, so that is a behavioral adaptation. Now we saw some really amazing, cool superpowers with our animals today. I wanna challenge you, the next time you find an animal friend, I want you to see if you can find their superpowers. See if you can find their physical and their behavioral adaptations. But until next time, I'll see you guys later.